So now I'm going to let monthly factor models go really out of control. Let me start with a different kind of intuition. I emphasized before the portfolio intuition. Investors are trying to buy uh, securities that hedge other shocks to news or labor income that drives expected returns off of what the beta times the market um, uh, predicts. The other way of looking at it is just directly as proxies for consumption. We have an underlying theory that M should be, uh, that the discount factor is proportional to margin utility. So let's just think about stuff that might affect margin utility or, or hunger, uh, the inverse of consumption, uh, or might affect consumption itself. Uh, any of those are inspiration for multi factor models. Obviously, the return on, on the stock market is going to affect margin utility. It's going to affect consumption. It's going to affect margin utility. News about future returns is going to affect it. Current and news about future uh, income in your business, in your real estate, all of these things are, are legitimate. Of course, if you talk to a macroeconomist, they write whole models that relate consumption growth to GDP, investment, unemployment, interest rates, productivity shocks, you name it. So under the same philosophy, we could use those relationships to uh, proxy consumption for its macroeconomic determinants. And in fact, lots of people have written down uh, factor models where they look at uh, expected returns uh, uh, relative and then betas on GDP growth, investment growth, and so on and so forth. Furthermore, uh, just, just to give you more, more tools to play with, we have the mimicking portfolio theorem that justifies lots and lots of different kinds of portfolios as factors for factor models. Again, the theorem, suppose you start with a discount factor is linear in GDP growth but you don't want to use GDP growth data, well, let's invoke the mimicking portfolio theorem. Our objective was to find reasons, excuses for using portfolios on the right-hand side. We can just project M onto X, and as you remember, projecting M onto X produces an X star, which prices exactly the same way as the original M. So if you believe that factor model, then you believe uh, this set of portfolios. In practice, Project just means run a regression. So, so if that's income growth, uh, you could regress income growth on asset returns, and the right-hand side of that regression is a portfolio. Heck, you could just run consumption growth on asset returns and think about the mimicking portfolio for asset returns. People tend not to run these regressions, but they tend to invoke that theorem and say, well, maybe my asset uh, factor is, in fact, a mimicking portfolio for some macroeconomic variable. We're left at a fairly uncomfortable stage. Uh, we now have a, a fair zoo of asset pricing models, a fair zoo of factors we can use. Fama called it a, a fishing expedition or a license, uh, the ICAPM, a license to go fishing for factors. And I think we need to think a little harder and, and bring some rules to the game back. So let's next uh, think a little bit about what all these assumptions mean and how to use them.